almost guarantee you've never seen anything quite like this because frankly, I haven't seen anything quite like this either. In this video, we're gonna be taking your design game to a whole new level with an advanced ice style chain effect for Illustrator. Get ready to witness something truly unique as we show you how to build three different types of diamond brushes and master the art of building the perfect pattern. Let's get right into it. Firstly, go ahead and open a new document. Just name it how you please. This is just going to be called Diamond Rhinestone Effect 2023. For the width, we're going to go with the classic 2450 pixels by 2700 pixels. And this is what I use for all my t-shirt designs, even in Photoshop. Make sure it's in portrait mode, CMYK as the color code. And also make sure your high resolution is set to 300 DPI. And just open that document. From here, we'll introduce a circle using the ellipse tool and remove the fill from this. I want you to go ahead and head over back to the ellipse tool, hold it down so you can select the polygon tool um, and you're gonna introduce the six sided shape. Make sure you hold shift so it straightens up for you. After that, get the selection tool, select it all and align it using the alignment tool. Now this gives us the fundamental shape for our diamond and just to make it more clear, we're just going to turn the color of the lines into white so we have a better contrast. And from here, we're going to start introducing the lines in order to create a sort of diamond pattern. Go ahead and select the pen tool and create lines heading outwards from the polygon tool to the circle to create a sort of hexagonish pattern of some sort. And from here, we're just gonna introduce other lines in between to create more geometric shapes that ultimately lead into triangles. The key here is to have a fundamental base that looks sort of clean. Don't beat yourself up if it doesn't look perfect. As you can see here, I'm not measuring any alignments or using any of the alignment AI within Illustrator to make sure everything's straight. I'm just going ahead and adding triangles and other geometric shapes into this diamond to create the fundamental pattern. From here, we're gonna introduce a bunch of random lines and that's gonna create the different shades in the diamond in itself in order to get this to a realistic looking effect make sure you don't beat yourself up let me say that again make sure you don't beat yourself up in making it look symmetrical just for safety hold option while selecting everything and drag it across to make a duplicate and from here you want to just turn off the opacity completely and this is where we're going to start introducing colors and build the fundamental look of our diamond for colors basically you're just going to go ahead and get the tool again to get a square make sure you select it and get the square option and from here you're just going to go ahead and head over into the books panel in the swatches and from here go to color books and click pantone plus cmyk uncoded and scroll all the way to the bottom where you're going to find a lot of the monochrome slash dark colors and these are going to be the colors for our diamonds essentially you're going to be wanting around five to eight colors in order to get this looking as best as you can you can always add in more colors but with more colors and shapes comes graphical or um, power slash RAM usage from your computer so just be wary with this because this will affect how your illustrator operates now if this is not an issue for you go ahead and add 50 million colors because that makes the diamond look more realistic and I'll show you guys how to change the color down the line of the full diamond in case you don't really like the look of your diamond with the colors that you select. Now that we got our colors selected, we're just going to drag our diamond across and we're going to grab the shape builder tool and we're going to open the color slash fill option, which is going to show all our colors that we selected before. From here, we're just going to go ham and fill in the diamond all differently with the different color shapes and try to find where the lighting is coming from. So if it's coming from the left or the right, make sure you have more highlights on that side. But if you just want to free fall it, go ahead and make it free fall. Mine, the diamonds getting shine from light from top down. So I'm trying to recreate that effect with color theory, but it doesn't look that realistic and it doesn't really matter. This is one of those things where you just have to trust the process. After you finish painting your diamond like Procasso, all you're going to want to do is hold option while selecting the whole thing and drag it across to make a duplicate and go right click, arrange and center back. From here, make the diamond at the back a little bit bigger and rotate it so the colors are in different spots. And if you want to, you can go ahead and edit the colors and add new colors in. The reason why we're doing this is essentially we're building a bevel for the diamond in itself because a diamond is 3D and we're trying to recreate that look top down. 
To finish off the diamond, you want to go ahead and add a single prong. Now, a prong is what holds a diamond when it's set onto, I guess, a ring or even a chain, for example. And to do that, you just simply get the ellipsy tool, create a circle, make a duplicate of that circle, make that a little bit smaller and don't hold um, shift so you can actually warp it change the color of the top circle into white so it displays a highlight and then just put that on all four sides congratulations you've created your first diamond now it doesn't look like a diamond just yet because we haven't put it into context but you can see it forming or coming together we're going to repeat that whole thing again but create a sort of what you would call baguette diamond and it's the exact same process but you're just using a rectangular shape or rectangular polygon shape if that even makes sense and you're just repeating this whole thing again if you are having trouble on creating a sort of baguette diamond just look on google images for references so you can see where the light is coming from and try to recreate that using the same method and technology that we just did to create this round diamond after going through that long process again you should have two diamonds with you and they should look something similar to this whether you went with a different shape of diamond it's completely up to you and it gives you the form of making a cool effect now we're going to move on to the first pattern which is essentially just going to be a sort of rhinestone pattern and it's very easy to make once you have your diamond but first, let's just go ahead and introduce a star. Main reason being is we want a little bit of shine with our diamond, and that's gonna help us make the effect look better if we do introduce this little flare, sort of to speak, from the light. And all you have to do is introduce two sort of stars, overlay on top of each other, get the direct selection tool, select the anchor points and just drag them out randomly, which allows you to make a sort of ununiformed flare looking effect to show that the light is shining off something and just place that around your diamond in a sort of random pattern where you would see the light coming from. I want you to group everything together and head over to help and search pattern. I like doing it this way because I don't want to be searching through the menus all the time and I just find this way a lot quicker. Um, from here, you're gonna start wanting to play with your pattern and get something that suits you or the chain that you're going for. For me personally, I'll put the copies to seven by seven first of all reason being is i just like seeing the pattern in full and get a better visualization of what it would look like on an object now this pattern is going to be too big so we're going to be adjusting it make sure you name your pattern and after you're done press the done check and it will pop up in your swatches and you'll see a pattern after that we're just going to introduce our second pattern and go directly into it you just want to create a duplicate of your baguette diamond get your classic circular cut diamond from here and select both of them once you got everything aligned make a duplicate of that and put it underneath and basically reflect it I tried aligning it using the alignment tool, but I just went by eye just to get the perfect look. And this is going to be our second, I guess, a diamond pattern or second diamond chain from here. We're basically going to introduce a new color. And the way you do that in the most effective manner is basically using Adobe's um, recolor artwork effect, which is absolutely amazing. Go ahead and head up to help and just type in recolor and recolor artwork should pop up get the eyedropper tool and have an image for reference and just select the image and it will recolor the artwork for you depending on what type of color diamond you're going for this effect really brings everything together and you start to see the diamond in itself once you start recoloring it because it just essentially takes the tones and applies the color to it i wanted this sort of purple diamond so i just took a screenshot off google and placed it into the actual graphic sorry into the actual artboard after getting that selected i selected a diamond went to recolor and recolored artwork and i got this purple diamond now that was perfect for me and i just recreated that on the second one to create sort of symmetry I want you to go ahead and add in a little bit of flares because right now the diamond's looking really flat and we need to add some character to make it look more realistic 
after you've got that done just group everything and make a duplicate holding option dragging away just in case we make a mistake select the mini pattern that we made go up to help and press pattern make or type in pattern slash make from here it's up to you on how creative you want to be me personally i'm just going to make a very plain looking pattern and go with the traditional like laid in set diamonds that you would see on a pendant so that's just row by row brick by brick for a tighter looking pattern, make sure you got the size tile to art checked in and that's going to bring everything just around, I guess, the pattern that we made at the beginning. And after this, you're going to add in a blocky color just so it's not transparent at the back if you want to. If not, you can leave it as is and press click or press the done check and you have a new pattern. But for me personally, I'm going to add in a blocky color in the background for support so it's not just floating. Make the color whatever you want, but don't be too held into it because you can always just edit the pattern and add in a new color as you see fit. But I always go with the classic black because it makes the diamonds shine a little bit more. All that's left is just to name your pattern, whatever you want it to be. I just kept changing the names like diamond backing two or slugs or whatever you want the name to be. Make sure you press the done check. And now you have essentially two patterns complete. Now that we got our patterns complete, we're gonna go ahead and start working on our brushes. Now for the brushes, all you're gonna wanna do is just open the brush panel, which is usually to the right of you, right underneath your swatches. And you just wanna select the diamond that we have originally and create a new brush using that little plus icon within the brush panels. From here, just name it whatever you want, diamond brushes or diamond brush two. And the only, setting that you're going to be wanting to change is the rotation now rotation is just the direction in which the diamond is going into everything else can be fixed unless you're going for a certain effect for this one i'm just going to set the rotation to tilt but keep all the settings the same so nothing's really changing essentially but we just have that just in case like the diamond looks a bit odd draw in an s just to make sure everything is working properly and the way you do that is make sure you close off your shape or you don't have to close it off and just click your actual pattern or brush that you've made sorry i keep referring it to a pattern the brush that you've made and now we see that we it works we're just going to try it on typography i've just created a p create an outline using that p and basically add in a stroke because it's strokes that go on the brushes and add in the pattern, sorry, add in the brush and adjust the sizing to see if everything is looking nice and crisp. You guys can see it taking form now. See, all you had to do was trust the process. Since we've made a lot of progress, I just wanna remind you to go ahead and save your project before moving forward because this is when we start introducing a lot of things that, may, that might make your Illustrator crash. Moving on to brush two, which is just a get, go ahead and add in the little plus icon, press scatter brush again, make sure your rotation is set to tilt, but this is where everything comes into hand to making it look right. I want you to grab the tilt rotation and drag it all the way to negative 180 because that's going to close off the actual diamond in itself. And then simply just press OK and that's going to allow everything to look clean. Make sure that your rotation is set to path. So the rotation tilt is set to path and not the actual, I guess, page or object. So set to path and that's going to allow it to flow nicely and not like this. For the last brush, it's essentially the same as the baguette one. Make sure you create a new brush, scatter brush, make sure it's set to path, go to rotation negative 180, and I'm gonna put this one on rotation this time. Name it whatever you want. Diamond pattern six, five, three, one, nine. It doesn't really matter. Just name it what you want. And in case it doesn't look bad like this, I'm gonna show you how to fix this real quick. Essentially, all you're going to want to do is head back into the pattern edit so you can edit the settings and all you're going to want to do is go over to the right side of the rotation or tilt, whatever you want to call it, and set that setting to 80 or negative 80. The main reason being is because our actual pattern of the diamonds that are in four 
was tilted to an 80 degree angle and now this will apply if you have any sort of shape tilted a certain way you can go ahead and edit that shape and that's how you turn it within the brush settings sorry not the pattern the brush settings and go ahead and add in your final brush and that's going to be all three brushes complete from here we're going to start building our actual diamond custom pendant i'm just going through and making sure i keep everything in mind just so i can remember it <laughs> This layer is looking too messy, so we're gonna go ahead and grab a new layer, turn the bottom layer off, and we're gonna introduce a sort of design that we can put our brush or diamond effect on so we can make our own custom pendant. Now, I just went to Pinterest after typing in the name revision, and I just did a little search. This was gonna be the reference for the design. I went ahead and downloaded it, dragged it into Illustrator so I could have a reference in front of me and started working on recreating it. After recreating the design to a desired look that I wanted, I went ahead and aligned everything, made sure everything is good. And I started to introduce our diamonds to make it into a pendant. Now I like to work from back to front. So I start with the layer at the very um, furthest so I don't miss anything. And all you have to do is just add a little stroke, whatever color you want there to be and head over onto your brushes, which is gonna be in this panel and click the brush that you want. And that's gonna to apply to the actual object shape or logo. Adjust the sizing as you see fit and make sure to go in and play with it to see what looks best for you. For me, I just essentially put everything on there and then adjust it as I go until I get a desired look for my diamond. I'm very indecisive, so I'm going to be going back and forth, back and forth until I get the certain placement that I want um, and just go ahead and entertain different options. Like if it would look good with the baguette, do I need to add another diamond? How did this affect this diamond? How does this pattern look on this layer? Do I need even a diamond on this or am I doing too much? Like I said, this is very unique to you and it should flow well with the design that you have currently. And now I like to pick very blocky type for this effect because it allows the diamonds to shine a bit more. You can see that our pattern is a bit too big and we're going to be adjusting that as we go also. But first, let's just go ahead and play with everything so it looks as comfortable as it can be before we start refining it and making the final revisions to make it look very clean and aesthetic. After a couple minutes of playing with the actual brushes and effects that we have, we have it to a comfortable state where we can go in and adjust the patterns. So firstly, I'm going to collect the last or the first pattern that we made. And we're going to go ahead and click those three burger menus or the burger menu, sorry, and edit pattern. From here, we're going to go ahead and make the pattern a bit smaller reason being is because the pattern is just too big for the diamond shape that we have right now and in illustrator there is no way to i guess scale the pattern um to a certain size that you want randomly you have to go back in and edit the pattern which gets a bit annoying but it isn't too hard just go ahead and select the main object that the pattern is being made from scale it down to a desired look always zoom in and zoom out just to see if it looks good and also try it out if it looks too big still go back in and edit the pattern in itself so just to reiterate what I just said, make sure you click the thing with the pattern on there or the objects, click the burger menu, click edit pattern, and then go ahead and select the main object, scale it down, and that's going to scale your whole pattern for you. If you do run into something like this, just simply size the tile to the art and it's going to allow you to make everything look nice and flush now with this diamond pattern or rhinestone pattern whatever you want to call it essentially the smaller you make it depending on the size of your object the cleaner it's going to look so the more diamonds little diamonds you have the cleaner and more realistic it looks because it imitates what a real diamond pendant would look like after that, I want you to go ahead and make all the final refinements you're wanting to make for your custom iced out pendant or chain and just make it look as dope as you can. 
have a reference of a chain next to you if you want so you can try to copy the look of the chain and how a real jeweler would set diamonds because this is digital and it's not going to look as realistic and i wanted to add in yellow rather than make it fully iced out just to have some contrast and understanding slash readability for my actual design you can go ahead and add in shadows underneath each layer which i would recommend to get a more realistic look but this is more than effective in itself. Now, if your computer does start to run slow or slow down while you're doing this, because I can understand that this is a lot of, I guess, little layers in terms of the shapes and everything, go ahead and press Command Y if you're on Mac to access the wireframe mode. And that's gonna allow you to move around more easily because Illustrator is not rendering in the graphic. But now that we got the fundamentals down on how to resize the tiles and how to address the brushes in itself, you can also go ahead into the brush settings and add in 0 0.15 like if you want your diamonds to be really small. And that comes in really handy in terms of the stroke when it comes to the baguette because the baguette takes up a lot of space because it is a rectangle. And if you want it to look more realistic or more flush, make it smaller because that's gonna bring a more smoother line. And that's how you get a more cleaner looking pendant. But now that you have everything and all the fundamentals down, go ahead and just start exploring and playing with this new brush that you've made. Now you can do stuff like play with, I guess, script fonts. And with script fonts, I would recommend you draw in the script font or trace over the script font so you can have a single line displaying each letter and that looks cooler. And then having an offset that would essentially outline or encase the baguette. That looks really sick and it looks really realistic. And I like the look of that because now you're introducing like a custom pendant, but it's, it's made script and it's set with baguettes and regular diamonds. Like I said, your mind is limitless once you've got the fundamentals down and just start mixing and matching until you get your desired look. After you're finished playing with Illustrator and getting your designs how you want them to look, I want you to open a new Photoshop document. This Photoshop document is going to allow you to make mockups, play with the shapes and the icons a lot easier without having to work with them in Illustrator because they are very RAM intensive and the graphics in itself with all the different layers will hurt your computer and maybe cause a potential crash. So make sure you're saving, but also create a new Photoshop document, which you can put your diamond um, pendant designs in for preview. And like I said before, it will allow you to make better mockups and you can also just export them as PNGs in case you wanted to make a mockup for a technical in Illustrator rather than using the actual vector item. Let me not stress this enough. The vector item is very detailed once you have like 60 million different pendants or little diamonds encrusted into the design because you're going to have a lot of layers and this is the most effective way so your computer doesn't crash and plus you keep the efficiency up. I want you to close it off by making a cool mock-up or technical of the design that you made and just rate it for yourself. Like this effect, I rate it a solid 10 out of 10. And I really learned and built this idea of a client project because they had this idea to make a diamond sort of pendant, but within Illustrator. I didn't want to do it in Photoshop, so I taught myself how to do it in Illustrator. Now I'm teaching you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'll see you guys on the next one. I love you. Peace.